Hello, and welcome back for the final part of the story of Samuel Morse. We last saw Samuel completing his invention, the telegraph. Sam's invention was just a hobby compared for his love of painting. In 1834, his golden opportunity arrived. In the Capitol building at Washington, D.C., in a big room called the Rotunda, there were four walls left blank. Four of America's top artists would be invited to paint a scene from American history. Everyone said, surely Samuel Morse will be the one of the artists. Samuel himself believed it. Who had worked harder, waited longer, prayed more earnestly? He would be paid $10,000, a sum that equals $100,000 today. After the voting, Sam heard the bad news. One man on the committee, the old enemy of his father's, was powerful enough to block Samuel's appointment. The disappointment was terrible. Samuel dreamed of having a part in building the new nation he loved, and now his chance was gone. The end of my career, Sam groaned, kneeling by his bed. Why? Why? Had God forgotten Sam? No, God had greater plans for Sam. God was working for his good. Sam no longer painted. Instead, he spent hours perfecting his invention. During this time, God sent a friend named Alfred Vail. Alfred's father owned a business in New Jersey, which made iron products. My father wants you to have this, Al said one day, handing Samuel a check. Money to build a bigger machine. Money to take it to Washington and show the electric telegraph to Congress. Sam and his new partner Al worked tirelessly together, and they created for their new invention a new language. The Morse Code. Sam was now beginning to understand that what his invention could do for America. He said... My Heavenly Father's hand guided all of this. I have his joy. I can even sing. Day after day, Sam attended the meetings of Congress and pleaded for money to prove his invention. Finally, Congress voted $30,000 to lay a cable underground from Washington to Baltimore, a distance of 40 miles. But a hot pipe burned the cable, and it did not work. Only $5,000 remained. Put up poles and stretched the wire overhead from Washington to Baltimore. Along the railroad tracks, Sam instructed. On May 24, 1844, Sam sat in the Supreme Court chamber in the Capitol, and his friend, Al, sat at a railroad station in Baltimore. Get ready, Sam thought. Here goes the very first telegraph message ever sent. What words shall I use? He wanted to honor God who kept him at this for twelve long years. A friend suggested some words from the Old Testament. What hath God wrought? Sam tapped out the letters. Al did not know what message Sam would send, but he received it immediately. He tapped back the same verse to Sam. What hath God wrought? Sam also received it immediately. It is all of God, he declared. He has used me as his hand in all of this. I am pleased that my Father in heaven has allowed me to do something for him 
and for his world. The government still considered the electric telegraph a mere toy. Many years of hard work lay ahead for Sam, but God was working things together for good. Sam started his own telegraph company. People bought shares in it. The first money he earned, $45, he gave to help a Sunday school. Later, he gave large amounts to colleges, Bible schools, and missions. In 1866, Sam's friend Cyrus Field laid the first cable under the Atlantic Ocean, and communication between America and Europe began. Now words could go to the ends of the earth, immediately. Almost 30 years after the first telegraph measures were sent, the convention of telegraph operators from all over the world gathered in New York City to honor Samuel Morse. They unveiled a statue of him in Central Park. Sam and his friend Cyrus sat together at the banquet that night. Sam, at age 80, sent his last message to the world. It was not Christmas, but this verse told the way he felt. He tapped out the message, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will to men. Signed, Samuel F. B. Morse. The crowd burst into song of praise to God. On his coat, Samuel wore medals of appreciation from almost every nation on earth. He had helped the youngest nation of all to become a world power and a leader in science, and he had connected all the nations of the world together by his amazing wires. God had worked all things in Sam's life together for good. And that was the story of Samuel Morse. But what was the great disappointment that Samuel Morse had? And how did God use this disappointment for Samuel's own good? It took many years before the invention was a success. When we are disappointed, we may see the good in just a short time. Or God may take a long time to work things together. We must trust God's promise and know that he has a plan. I'm glad you could join me for this story. Please join us again in another time for a family missionary moment.